Sure. Her cells revolutionized the medical field, but cost her life. Now the family of Henrietta Lacks is pushing back and suing the biomedical company that has made billions from what they call stolen genetic material. In 1951, doctors at John Hopkins Hospital took tissues from Henrietta before she died of cervical cancer. They went on to become the first human cells to be successfully cloned and also became the cornerstone of modern medicine. The lawsuit was filed exactly 70 years ago after Henrietta Lacks died in 1951. Joining me now, um, we have researcher, genetics researcher, and Dr. Stephanie Vlachos. Welcome to BNC Live, Dr. Vlachos. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, it looks like you're James Cook, attorney James Cook. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm James Cook. <laughs> All right, hey, this is what happens in live TV. All right, Attorney Cook, question for you first, sir. Um, so tell us why these cells revolutionized medicine, sir. Well, my, my understanding about this is that the cells were used, um, basically they, they, they can uh, replicate themselves infinitely, all right? And so I, you really have to go to, to Dr. Vlachos to, to get the, the technical science behind that. But they're able to replicate themselves infinitely and then they were able to use these cells to to accomplish a number of medical breakthroughs, such as you know polio, in vitro fertilization, and, and gene cloning, and, and gene mapping. Attorney Cook, we're going to just stop you right there, sir. I didn't know we had Vlachos. Uh, Dr. Vlachos, I'm glad you're here because that question is Dr. actually Vlachos. for you. Tell us how these cells modernize medicine, please. So. Um, Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, back in the 19, uh, you know, 50s and 60s, research as, as we know it didn't exist back then. You know, we were still trying to understand DNA and what it was and all the things we could learn from it. And so to think that we could take cells out of someone and grow them in a dish in a lab was just unheard of. People had tried for years, you know, even in the late 1800s, and it just wasn't possible. Um, and so, you know, we always talk in, in research that we, you know, we like to play in the lab and that might mean, you know, trying something that's totally different and unheard of. And, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, um, we didn't have the ethical considerations that we have now. And so you would take, you know, a sample of tissue and see if you could grow it up because it wasn't possible. And um, for what we know now about the uh, lab logs that were taken by um, himself and the lab assistant, we know that this was one of the first pieces of evidence that we could grow human cells outside of a body and they would live. Um, and because of that, it just revolutionized what we could do. We no longer had to worry about poking and prodding humans, putting too many drugs um, into their bodies uh, because we could just take their cells out and do all that sort of manipulation in a dish. And so it really revolutionized uh, cell biology as we knew it at the time. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, awesome. All right, so uh, Attorney Cook, um, question, right, so this Attorney one is Cook, actually um, for question, you. This one is actually for uh, you. Okay, so we're at a time where structural racism uh, okay. is being exposed from the pandemic uh, all the way to George Floyd, the death of him uh, at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer. Is this the right time for the Lax family um, to file this lawsuit? I think this is the perfect time. You know, so, so the, the, this case, it exemplifies something that we all know. Um, let's just start at the very basic level. You can go to any big city in America and everyone knows there's the white hospital and there's the black hospital. There's the hospital where, where, where white affluent people go and there's a hospital where, where poor people go. So that, that's number one. Number two, um, you know, we're, one of the things that, that George Floyd brought out is that there is racism in, 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 in every part of the society, such as medical racism, all right? We saw this play out during the protests in terms of, you know, you know during the 2020 uprisings, you know, where people talked about the fact that, that, that COVID disproportionately f affected people of color and specifically black people. And also the COVID vaccines, the distribution of the COVID vaccines. So, and I, and I would say this, um, you know, one of the things is that, that this brings up is that, you know, black people 
have a very different reason for not wanting to get vaccinated. And this is one of those reasons. Tuskegee, the Mississippi experiments. And now, you know, we have this. And it's distinctly different from, you know, the, the, the Trump supporters who equate Trump loyalty with, you know, being unvaccinated and, and you know, not believing in science. And this, at, at, at this point in history, we need cases like this, like Benjamin Crump said, right, where to, to, to highlight the fact that there is racism in biomedical ethics, all right? And, and, and so, so we see these things happening. And, and again, like Crump said, this is a point where America has to do what they said that they were going to do during the George Floyd protests. All the hey, we're we're gonna you know kumbaya, let's let's equitable. We're gonna you know kumbaya, let's let's equitable treatment, diversity programs. Wait, here's your here's everyone's um opportunity to show their commitment to racial justice. Absolutely, and Dr. Blatchell. Um, Attorney Cook, I'm sorry, we we got to get Dr. Blatchell's last word in because we're running out of time. Um, Dr. Blatchell's the exploitation of Henrietta Lacks. What does that say about the medical field? And to piggyback off of what Attorney Cook just said, um, sounds like someone's audio was up because I, I keep hearing myself echo. So if you, someone could turn it down, please, so we can get this last question. I'd appreciate it. Uh, what does it say about the medical field throughout this country and also the history? Uh, just to piggyback off of what Attorney Cooks uh, mentioned. Yeah, the one thing I will say, I actually didn't have any audio from uh, Mr. Cook, but um, just from what we know about, um, um, you know, how science is and how, you know, society is, we, we should really learn from our past. And just because mistakes were made in the past doesn't mean that makes it okay. Um, and so moving forward, I think um, we know so much more now. I think there is just a global understanding of what was done and an awareness about the racial injustice, especially that African African Americans faced in the United States. Um, you know, I think there's 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 a lot of rationale behind this lawsuit, and I think there's a lot of merit behind the lawsuit, given what the Lax family has contributed to science worldwide, not just you know this one company, but globally academic research and researchers as a whole has moved forward because of this family. And I think it's time that uh, they receive the, the right credit for it. All right, I guess time will tell how this whole thing plays out. Um, I'd like to thank you both for joining us this afternoon. It was a pleasure having you, Attorney Cook, Dr. Vlachos, t discussing the Henrietta Lacks family lawsuit. Thank you both again. Coming up next on BNC Live, we'll introduce you to a unique young man who is literally talking himself into a place in history. More on this real live game changer when BNC Live returns with sports. Closed captioning brought to you by Nutrisystem. Lose weight and get healthy with meals delivered to your door. 